Mr. Mean lived up to his name. He lived in what could have been a nice house, but wasn't. He never painted it, or mended the windows, or repaired the roof. Inside it was the same, no carpets, no curtains, no pictures, no fires. And Mr. Mean was so mean he made his furniture out of old orange boxes and then complained about the price of nails. Why, he was so mean. Do you know what he gave his brother for Christmas last year? A piece of coal. It wasn't as if Mr. Mean didn't have any money. Oh, no. He had lots of money. But would he spend it? Not old Meany. Not if he could help it. One day, he was sitting in his gloomy kitchen, having a gloomy meal, when there was a knock at the door. Drat, he said, because he didn't like people. Drat and bother. He opened the door, and there on his doorstep stood a wizard. A rather fat wizard. Hello, said the wizard. I wonder if, uh, by any chance, as uh, it's such a warm day, you could possibly, if it's not too much trouble, uh, be so kind as to, if it's not inconvenient, perhaps, as I'm very thirsty, uh, provide me with, uh, do you think, a glass, if it's not too much to ask of water, please? He was a very wordy wizard. No, replied Mr. Mean rudely, and shut the door in his face. <laughs> How did you get in? Well, replied the wizard, it was by, how shall I put it, I just, well, you know, waved the old what's-his-name magic wand, don't you know, and then, you know, well, here, here I am, if you know what I mean. You must be very poor, he remarked kindly, looking round. Oh, yes, I am, lied Mr. Mean. Then uh, perhaps I can help you, said the wizard, pulling up a box to sit down on. The box didn't move, so the wizard pulled it harder. And this time it did move. In fact, it tipped up and spilled Mr. Mean's money all over the floor. Well, 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 well. Well, 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 well. It would appear to me that you, sir, are an old meanie. Mr. Meanie didn't hear him. He was too busy scrabbling all over the floor trying to pick up his money. And meanies need to be taught a lesson. And so saying, he waved his magic wand. All the money turned into potatoes. Potatoes. Oh dear, oh, oh dear me, oh dear me, please turn my money back into money. Oh please, please, please. Perhaps, replied the wizard, but on the other hand, taking all these into account, by and large, things being what they are on the face of it, perhaps not. However, continued the wordy wizard, if you make me a solemn promise, Never to be mean again, then I'll turn the potatoes back into money. But, he added sternly, if you are ever mean again, then it's, oh, how shall I put it, then it's potatoes for you, my lad, if not other vegetables as well. The following day, Mr. Mean decided to walk to town. He never took the bus, because that cost money. On the way, he met an old washerwoman carrying an enormous bundle of washing. Oh, please, please, can't, sir, he said. Could you possibly help me to carry this washing? It's, it's so heavy. No, replied Mr. Bean. It's your washing. You carry it. But as soon as he'd said that, he felt a tingling in his nose. Mr. Bean's nose turned into a carrot. Oh, no, he gasped. The old washerwoman chuckled. And then Mr. Mean remembered the wizard's words. Yes, oh yes, he cried in a panic. Of course I'll help you, of course. And the carrot turned back into her nose. And off he went. The old washerwoman chuckled again. And turned back into the wizard. <laughs> it had been him all along, you see. Then Mr. Mean passed by a cottage garden. In the garden, there was an old man chopping wood. Oh, hey, 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 excuse me, excuse me, he called. Uh, could you give an old man a bit of hand, young fellow, my lad? No, replied Mr. Mean. It's your wood. You chop it. But as soon as the words had passed his lips, guess what happened? His ears turned into tomatoes. Oh, no, he gasped. The old man chuckled. Mr. Mean remembered the wizard's words. Oh, yes, yes, he, he cried. No, yes, of course I'll give you a hand, of course. Mm -hmm. And he chopped and chopped until all the wood was cut. And the tomatoes turned back into ears, and off he went. 
Eventually, Mr. Bean arrived in the town. There was a little boy crying because his ball had got stuck on the top of the wall. Oh, please, please, sir, could it make my, make my ball down for me? No, retorted Mr. Bean. Your ball, you... Then he stopped. There was a funny tingling feeling in his feet. Yes, yes, he said hurriedly. Yes, of course I will, of course. Hmm. And he reached up and passed the ball to the boy and went on his way, looking anxiously at his feet. The little boy stopped crying and turned into the wizard. I think, he said to himself, I think that Mr. Bean, by and large, is beginning, if I'm not very much mistaken, uh, to be not quite so mean. And I think, although I could be wrong, although I never am, uh, that he has, thank goodness, learned his lesson. And do you know something? Mr. Bean had learned his lesson. Today, he's nothing like so mean as he used to be. And he doesn't keep his money in a box in the kitchen anymore. Today, his house is mended and painted and spick and span. And he's turned into quite a generous sort of fellow. Goodness, he's so generous. Do you know what he gave his brother last Christmas? Two pieces of Thank you.